Hello, I've been looking into building a small tube-based headphone amplifier, so I started building a small prototype here using the sockets I made in the last video. And based on this I came up with a preliminary schematic. If we just run through it really quickly here, and we have our input over here, audio, so this is only showing one channel. And down here we have a gain adjust. So we will have different levels of gain that can be set for the amplifier. The reason I added the gain adjust is because headphones require very different levels of voltage amplification depending on their impedance and sensitivity. So I can set three different levels here with these three resistors. I'm not sure the resistor values here are correct and generally the whole schematic here, these are not necessarily final resistor values. So all the voltage gain is taking place in the first triode here and at the same time it provides a nice controlled impedance for our feedback loop divider before going into the second triode. Then we have the output stage over here. It's a push-pull configuration also known as a white cathode follower from the engineer Eric White who first came up with this circuit about 75 years ago and this design here does not rely on an output transformer instead we just have a coupling capacitor here on the output and then we have feedback going back here to the previous stage so overall a very simple design there's really nothing revolutionary here but I want to try to see if I can get it to perform well since the first prototype got a little bit messy I decided to make a circuit board to make it easier to get some good measurements. So here we see the top side and here we have the bottom side of the circuit board. So of course there's high voltage on here. I plan to run this at around 250 volts so we do need a quite a lot of isolation on all the high voltage traces. This is about one and a half millimeter isolation. Uh, it should be sufficient for up to 300 volts. And just a quick look at the assembly. So first getting all the resistors in, all the vias, then some more resistors, bigger resistors and some connectors here. So over here, this is our input, gain select, this is our output over here. And down here we will have our B plus and our heater voltage coming in. Here we get some coupling capacitors in some tube sockets and a few resistors that didn't have the exact values and finally adding all the electrolytic capacitors. So it's a lot neater than the first prototype. And here we have the assembled board. Uh, it's looking pretty nice. So I think the first test to do here just to make sure none of the wheels are shorted. Well, let me just get my meter here. Do a quick test. It's on the heater, it's on the high voltage. Yeah, it's looking good. So the tubes I'm going to be using are going to be a 12AU7 in the pre-stage, while this one says 6189. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, 6189 up here, USA. I think all the other writing is gone. Uh, it's probably a Sylvania, there's some green text down here. Anyway, this is the same as the 12 AU7. And for the output, I'm using a Russian 6N6P, also a dual triode, but able to dissipate a little bit more power. So this is very similar to an ECC99, very similar specs, but however, the pinout is not the same. This tube's got a typical Russian pinout where you have the two heaters in parallel on pin 4 and 5 and pin 9 is a shield uh, between the two triode sections, you can see it in here. So anyway, let's get it in. I've hooked up a couple of power supplies here, one for the heater supply and one for the high voltage supply over here. For the first test here, I'm not going to run full 250 volt uh, high voltage supply. I'm just going to use a Benz power supply. I have my homemade power supply that will deliver up to 60 volt. I believe that should be enough to get the tube started and we can see if the circuit is working. First, I'm adding the heater supply. I've set the output to 
6.3 volt and limit the current to 1.3 amp. Now we just let that rise and the tubes are warming up a little bit. Yeah, it's looking good. And then it's time to add the high water supply. And then I'll just slowly dial it up. Okay, that looks good, no problems. I've hooked up my scope on the output and I've connected a couple of wires. So over here, just to set the gain to the maximum and just the wire here on the positive input. So if you look at the scope here, it's already picking up noise from the mains. And if I hold the wire here, you can see the noise increases significantly. So I short the input here and the noise is gone. So, so I'm fairly confident everything is working as intended and we can move on. I've hooked it up to the high voltage power supply. I've set it to 250 volts and we can see it's drawing about 30 milliamps. So it all looks good. And I've also hooked up my analog discovery so we can do some basic measurements. So it's just hooked up here to the output and the input. And I've added a load, small resistor over here. So this is a 750 ohm resistor. So let's do a couple of basic measurements and see how it performs. Let's start with a frequency response measurement. So here we're going from 1 hertz all the way up to 1 megahertz. So let's see what that looks like. So this is looking good. Look at here 1 kilohertz. That is our 0 dB reference point. And we can see the gain in the current setting is 4.79 dB. So right now it's set at the minimum gain setting. That sounds reasonable. And you can see the minus 3 dB points. At the low end is sitting about 5 to 6 hertz. And the high frequency it's about 250 kilohertz, 300 kilohertz. That is certainly high enough. This tiny dip we see here is actually the analog discovery. It's not 100% flat. Anyway, the frequency response looks good. So let's do some distortion measurements. Here we're doing a distortion and noise versus frequency measurement. So we're going from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz in 100 steps. And the level will be 50 milliwatt into 741 ohm. So this is the same 750 ohm resistor used for the frequency response, but I just measured it and it actually measured 740 ohm. So I'm using that value for accuracy. So let's see how this goes. So this is looking pretty good. The distortion is a bit high in the low frequencies, but once we get up in frequency, it's looking very good at about 0.02%. So this is where we're hitting, actually hitting the lower limit of the analog discovery. Uh, it cannot go any lower than 0.02%, but this is more to get an idea of what the performance looks like. So this, I'm pretty happy with this, uh, no problems here. And we can see the voltage swing is about 6 volt RMS. So we're hitting like plus minus 8.6 volt here. Uh, certainly no problems into a 741 ohm load. So let's try a smaller load and see how that goes. I have now switched to a 325 ohms resistor. It's supposed to be 330 ohm, but it measures as 325. So let's try the same measurements at 50 milliwatt into this load. So this is still looking good. We are around 0.03% distortion and a bit higher the low frequencies, but no problems here. So 325 won't be getting into realistic headphone territory. Some of the top Sennheisers are about 300 ohm. So let's try 150 ohm. 
And I'm hooked up a 148 ohm load, so let's go again. So now we're starting to see a rise in distortion. See here is 0.13% at 50 milliwatt into 148 ohm. Of course, 50 milliwatt is quite a lot for a headphone. Uh, most headphones probably not require more than 510 milliwatt to play quite loud. Anyway, let's try it to 60 ohm. So I hooked up a 61 ohm load, so let's go again here. At 50 milliwatt into 61 ohm, we are really pushing a little bit here. 0 0.75% distortion. So this is this is running it on a limit. Let's try 25 milliwatt. See how that looks. So at 25 milliwatt it looks more reasonable, 0.03% distortion here, so that's probably okay. Let's try into 30 ohms, I think that's the lowest we can go with this amplifier configuration. So oh, here we go, into a 29 ohm resistor. Yeah, so into 29 ohm we're sitting at about 1% distortion at 25 milliwatt. So yeah, that's probably the limit we add here. So I would say you could probably use it with a 30 ohm headphone, but I wouldn't try it with anything less than that. So I think there's one more measurement we should try. It's the output impedance because this circuit will have reasonably high output impedance. So I just want to see how much is it. So here I'll measure the output impedance using the two load resistors I used previous to my 741 ohm and 325 ohm. And we're going from 20 hertz up to 50 kilohertz, 100 steps. So let's try run this and see what it looks like. Okay, so we can see the output impedance is about 9.5 ohm, just sitting just below 10 ohm, uh, goes a little bit, I goes 10 ohm at 20 kilohertz and possibly a little bit higher down here, the low frequency. So yeah, it's fairly high output impedance, but for a transformerless two-base design, that is actually quite low. I've seen commercial two-base headphone amplifiers with output impedance up in the 100 ohm level and that's quite awful so the problem with high output impedance is that if you do have a low impedance headphone let's say 30 to 60 ohm and there's some variation in the impedance then it's going to change the frequency response but generally i'll say this is looking pretty good and it's actually better than what i expected so pretty happy with that so overall i'm fairly happy with these measurements and I think it will be worth the effort to continue and build a complete headphone amplifier. And I will even say you could make it into a combined pre-amplifier headphone amplifier because the distortion is quite low once we get above 600 ohm loads. However, there's still a lot of work to be done before we have a complete headphone amplifier. We need to design a power supply. So I think it's going to go with some kind of regulated power supply. And we need a heater supply as well. Plus, I think we need some kind of relay on the output. I'm pretty sure with large coupling capacitor like this on the output, uh, that will be quite a lot of DC once you power it on. Uh, we can try to do a quick test on the scope here. I'll just try I'll switch off the high voltage. So I'll try switch on the high voltage and see what kind of spike we're getting here. 
yeah, there we have it. So it's quite significant, like 10, 12 volts for a few hundred milliseconds. Spikes like that could destroy a pair of headphones. And this is with a 300 ohm load. Of course, with lower resistance load, there will be less of a spike. But still, I believe it would be worth it to implement something maybe with a 10 second delay before it switches on the outputs. Anyway, this is just part one in a series of build this headphone amplifier. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time in part two. Bye bye.